Hello everyone and welcome back to our stream from our Limitless Qualifier number one. Um, we took quite some while for round one, unfortunately. There were some technical issues as this happens when you do something for the first time. Um, yeah, we couldn't really prepare for that because it was an issue with uh, um, communication from RK9 to SmashGG. So they were supposed to transfer the play information like deck lists to SmashGG and they implement them. However, there was an issue with that, so that it worked like they expected a Smash game. So that's why players couldn't see the decklist of their opponent and also couldn't report their outcome. So we took quite some overtime. But everything should be fixed now, I believe. So the only thing stopping us now is server traffic, if anything. So yeah, I hope everything will go smooth from here on, or at least smoother. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed round one already and we will be going into a very interesting round because Martin, we are having a very interesting player, don't you think? Yeah, I'm always super excited to see the uh, Japanese players and we have uh, Yoshiyuki who's playing a really, really, really uh, interesting and innovative deck as you can see already. He's playing Zation. Uh, without ADP, but with another partner with Shedinja this time. Yeah, I was looking through the list of our featured players and I saw that some are playing um, Zation AD a lot are playing Zation ADP, of course, as that's always the case. But yeah, Yoshiyuki, uh, some also went with like Makario, which is more interesting. And when I looked at Yoshiyuki's list, I was like, yeah, this is probably going to be a Mercario deck, but then I looked like, no, no, no tag team, and then Shedinja, what's that doing there? <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I mean, Zation, like, it hits pretty hard, and it only gives up two prizes usually, and if your opponent doesn't play any altar creation-like cards in their deck, it only gives up one prize, right? And if you're able to train that super hard-hitting, tanky one prizer, um, I can imagine it would be pretty effective, so... I'm really uh, interested to see how this match will play out. Yeah, and yeah, one thing that's of course important to mention is that Yoshiyuki is from Japan. It is quite late for him already, so about like, I don't know, 9 in the evening or something. So I'm very impressed that he's bringing up the commitment to play this tournament. And yeah, also very thankful that he's willing to help us out as a stream player. Um, however, he is from pretty far away, so the connection might be a bit laggy. I hope you can still discern everything that's on the screen. I'm c I can certainly tell that the, that the visual quality is not that amazing. But yeah. yeah that's quite unfortunate, but not a lot has happened on the first two turns. His opponent is playing Malama with tag teams apparently in it, and mm -hmm. he has been able to get off the turn one, um, oh, yeah, turn one the Horror turn, House exactly. GX. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so I guess that's a good thing, because Yoshiyuki has quite a big hand, but he wasn't able to play any cards from it, because Horror House prevented it. So, uh, yeah, fortunately he did have two basics already, because with that many trainer cards he would have gotten donked here right away. And yeah, so he's, yeah. Yeah, so he's off for a pretty strong, for a pretty rough start for Yoshiyuki's side, because the opponent got the early Horror House, already managed to set up a Malama, got the turn to Knockout. And Yoshiyuki, on the other hand, doesn't have too much going for him, while being two prizes behind already. Yeah, he's probably looking to play down his hand a little bit. Um, maybe, yeah, send up the doll in the active, and then maybe deny knockout this turn. Um, and I would like uh, most likely like anticipate uh, some uh, his opponent to try to go for some hand disruption on the on the next turn because if you like if you see if you're staring down a Gengar Mimikyu you always try to play around that poltergeist and the goal of the Gengar Mimikyu player is exactly to like uh, put as many items in your hand as possible or disrupt that with like a Trevenant Dustnor but unfortunately the money for Yoshiki is not that great I think he would have liked to see a uh, quick ball yeah there it is of the Stellar Wish um, to grab an Inkada and maybe set up, uh, try to set up Shedinja on the next turn. Yeah, he could also go for the Dust Moon across more, which he's playing. Oh, actually, it does only damage to the bench, I believe, so he yeah, wouldn't do too much right now. But usually that's a pretty interesting attacker to soften up your opponent's Pokemon. However, uh, yeah, Yoshiyuki just going for the Oranguru here. Always a very strong card. Um, 
because it has this great synergy with physician as well where you can put a, an energy on top and then you can get that energy back uh, and accelerate it with the ability and yeah the, po the lily's poker doll it's really quite a good card right here because those Malama decks they are really powerful. They have all of those strong tag teams, but they usually don't have that much space because we already need to commit so much to attackers and consistency. So for something like gusting effects, a like custom catcher has no space left, and Yoshiyuki will basically be safe with his poker doll in the active position. Yes. And his opponent already has set up the copycat Mimikyu on the bench, which is quite a threatening attacker for uh, in in this matchup, because if you attack with the uh, the the attack formation with the brave blade, you just um, deal 230 damage. But then the Mimikyu can come back and just deal that right back to you. So you have to be quite careful. Um, exactly. If you use that attack. One of the big threats that all station decks are facing in this matchup is always that little Mimikyu, because it's just so easy to take out a big station with it. You commit so many resources to power it up. You get free energies on it, have your strong attacker, and this Mimikyu just comes down, gets his energies for free because of Malama, and knocks you out in one hit. But we see the Metal Core Barrier from Yoshiyuki. Attack you usually use... Uh, we so you sometimes see in ADP decks that want to attack for the mirror to like make the Zations more bulky. And yes. Yeah, and Yoshiyuki opted to include them here, and they reduce the damage on metal Pokemon for by 70, I believe, for one turn. So now this station will be able to survive the attack from Mimikyu. Yes, uh, really nice. And also, you want to be able to set up your second station on the bench while you swing with the first one. So, um, yeah, and there are not that many trainer cards in his hand. So the Porter Gas itself won't be a big threat for Yoshiyuki. So he's managed to play around that quite nicely. Um, we see how his opponent responds. Probably will not be able to get a one hit knockout, so just settle for a two shot. Do it as much damage as possible. See how it goes. Yep, and Yoshiyuki's board is looking quite decently by now. He was struggling a lot in the early game because your opponent with Horror House, you can make your opponent trip so easily and like um, try to exploit this. Um, and make your opponent set up weak, but Zation's just such an amazing card and stabilizing early on thanks to his inter interpret sword ability. Also, the opponent didn't manage to get Traven and Dusk not to follow up with, to follow his horror house or his poltergeist up. Something, yeah, something interesting his opponent could try to go for is like maybe if he plays Baby Blast Cephalon, just try to put four damage counters on the Ninkada for the knockout since it only has 40 HP mm. and then. Since the effect of Metal Core Barrier discards itself after the end of the turn, then the Zation will be vulnerable again to be knocked out by um, the Mimikyu, even if Yoshiyuki manages to switch switch it out and switch it back in to negate the effect of um, the Brave Blade attack. Yeah, so the opponent's playing quite the interesting hybrid of Malama, because usually we've seen those... Um, the tag team Malama not play something like Jirachi, just focus very much on supporters, tag teams, and the Dana Astro Engine. And the, we saw the baby Malama, which used non GX attackers quite a lot. Um, but this seems to be quite the hybrid. Um, it's playing the Jirachi Engine, and it has a good chunk of basic attackers. We see the Mimikyu, the Baby Blacephalon, we also see the Giratina and the Discard Pile, and also the Jirachi Engine. So, yeah, this is. is so it gives them kind of the option to go for whichever paths you like. Against something like Baby Blacephalon, I imagine that can be very handy to not put down any GX and just go for those one prizes and make it so much harder for your opponent to draw six prizes. And yeah, also, it's interesting, like if you open the Horror House, right, your opponent will probably knock out that Gengar Mimikyu and will be behind one turn already because he couldn't play any cards. And then he, you will be also be pressured by the Baby Blast Cephalon because if you take out one tag team, obviously you only have three prize cards left and then the spreading begins of the Baby Blast Cephalon. So I quite, I like that quite a bit, uh, actually. Yeah, and the versatility that he gets by including all of those different strategies, we see it shine right now because um, yeah, he obviously didn't want to use his tag team anymore. It didn't look like Yoshiyuki had like four cards in his hand, so the, it wasn't threatening at all. Um, but his Baby Blacephalon put in quite good work. And However, Yoshiyuki has the Custom Catchers right here, which is basically the perfect play. He's taking out the Mimikyu, yes. 
and he's also making sure to not take out the tag team first so he will avoid the baby blacephalon being able to deal 120 and, and take, you yeah and taking out the mimic of course is amazing yeah, and he probably won't bench, like, there's no way he will bench another Ninkada, since, since that would just be an easy knockout. Maybe just put it in your hand <laughs> yeah. as he grabs it, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, he oh, won't yeah. bench, the bench dusk, it into the Bibliocephalon. The Dusk main is also a pick I like. Um, you could actually course. go for the knockout with the Dusk main now, yeah. but no, that would make any sense. Maybe next turn. Yeah, exactly. It's probably something for next turn. Um, a bit awkward about it is that the, that the opponent drew three prizes already, so if he puts down another Dusk main, it makes it kind of easier for him to take all his prizes. Because right now he would have to take out two Zations probably, which can be quite tough, and yeah, if he just uses the Dusk main, it has considerably less HP than um, a Zation. Yes, that's true. Um, as we see, the Brave Blade here. Also, Yush um, Yoshiki's hands is quite is quite small, so you be uh, he must find a switch on the next turn probably. Okay. I mean, you always that's something also interesting about the Pokédoll, right? You can just retreat into it and then use the effect um, to cancel out the like use the effect <laughs> of the Pokédoll, put it under the deck, and this way you also negate the um, effect of Brave Blade, which makes it so you can't attack on the next turn. So that's exactly a really always. nice inclusion. Always a very versatile card in those decks. Um, in this scenario, probably doesn't matter too much, because if you retreat, you don't have energies anymore. And if you switch, you can just switch into Jirachi. But a lot of decks mm -hmm. are including Absol to disrupt your opponent, and it can be really helpful to not always need two switching cards to get your uh, Brave Blade reset. Yes. And now, the looks like he's going for Giratina. Um, softening up those bench Pokemon, and yeah, if he is able to use that Girat, yeah, he has two Malama, so he can probably attack with Giratina twice, and force Yushiyuki to activate the Blacephalon again. And also using the Giratina multiple times means that he gets access to the ability to damage to poke those bench Pokemon. So this is a really tough situation for Yushiyuki because if your opponent's basically set up perfectly yes he already really re has a really nice setup on board like malama is so nice because it sustains itself on the board once you get to the rough early turns there's not a lot that you have to do just find your optimal attackers exactly and, and they, if... we see the switch into giratina shadow impact yeah and if he's able to attack once more with giratina damage like these bench pokemon a little bit then he can probably just pick up the knock, uh, but he can pick up quite well some knockouts with uh, Blacephalon or at least like pick up a knockout on the Jirachi and damage the Zation enough to like snipe it off easily with basically anything and damage the entire board as well so like it's it's looking really tough. Yeah but there's a really nice top deck for Yoshiyuki, the switch giving him the options of uh, yeah going for the Stellar Wish and then a yep. huge Erika's would probably yep. follow it up, so that's really nice. Yeah, and he already has a Metal Saucer, so he will be able to take a knockout on the Gengar and this way preventing himself from going down to two prizes. Uh, from going yeah. down to three prizes, I mean, so from preventing that fireworks balloon, something like that. <laughs> Fire, <laughs> the, the baby Blacephalon from doing 120, so yeah, it's... it's yeah, playing around that is really important. Um, his opponent would be able to pick up uh, like some cheap prizes and um, snipe the Jirachi on the bench. So, yeah, that's important. But I still don't quite see how Yoshiyuki will be able to take his last two prizes. Um, but maybe if he can like go for I make mean, a Zation like, a little bit more tanky with the, with the um, Metal Core Barrier on the, one of the following turns, it would be an interesting play. Because you're don't take a lot of damage um, when uh, Giratina tries to hit into you, right? So yeah, uh, right now it's um, yeah, it's still looking pretty okay for Yoshiyuki because it takes a knockout and then he needs two more turns to win, and yeah. he already has two Zation powered up basically, and he will be able to retreat his Dust Mane Necrozma thanks to the escape board. So 
he takes three prizes here, then he takes another knockout next turn, and if he survives, then he's in a pretty good position to win this game. Also, the dust man across my isn't knocked out by Giratina because of resistance. Yep. That's kind of interesting. So, yeah, I guess it's um, also helping. And there's a metal core barrier, so looking yeah. for that damage mitigation on one of the following turns. Exactly. Like surviving the next turn will be the crucial thing for Yuki to win this game, and this metal core barrier could be exactly what he needs. We so, see, yeah. like, it's always interesting how to see how, what uh, what attackers exactly the Malama list includes because there's always something you could, uh, like, bring out and um, uh, yeah. that could swing it. But right now, I can't think of anything. Uh, we see uh, what what his opponent is going to do yeah, to stop him. Yeah, the question right now is basically if he, does he have something like the Treven and Dusk not tag team because that would be able to take the knockout here, or does he have another Gengar that would also do it? Yes. Um, other than that, I can't think of too much. Um, yeah, what attacking with. The... Yeah, Sorry. Oh uh, yeah, the best thing for him would be to attack with a Mewtwo. and copy like um, Treven and Dusk now, and then next turn he could just copy. Um, Naganadal GX and Snipe of uh, um, Bench Station, but oh, he has the Espro, so this one is also quite useful. Yeah, this looks. Yeah, he can snipe the snipe the station now, and then uh, next turn just needs to take one more prize card. Yeah, exactly. So it will be a close finish, no matter what. <laughs> yep, but currently there's nothing he can knock out yet. So. Um, unless Yoshiyuki puts down the Ninkada for some reason. Yeah. It's, yeah, if he. Yeah, I don't really think he has anything else to take a knockout. And also, from looking at this game, I'm pretty sure that he's basically playing very non GX Pokemon um, based. Like the normal build with just Jirachi Malama. And I, I think he probably just included one. Gengar Mimikyu tag team so that he can disrupt the opponent early on and has more time to stabilize. Yeah, that would also make a lot of sense. Um, as we see, probably, yeah, the Esper coming up, going for the snipe on the on yep. the Zacian. Still missing, then... still missing one energy foe, so that might actually yeah. be a whiff, especially since that Chaotic Swell is helping out by uh, preventing the Radiant Forest, but nope, there's the energy. So yeah, as probably we'll be able to take one prize, but where does he get his last prize from? Um, a big tech that could come in is the uh, Sorgelio Lunala tech team that some of us Malama decks are playing, but yeah, no, actually it needs four energy to take a knockout, so with only two Malama on board, that's not an issue. Oh, actually, yeah, he I does. I think there should there should, should be a Mewtwo in his deck, right? Yeah, Mewtwo true, Jax true. in the Malama de player's deck, because there's an... Uh, like the Stinger again it is, so there's probably a Mewtwo, I would assume that, so... True, so I was too quick on assuming that he doesn't have it, doesn't have it, but he only has two Malama on board, so that doesn't make that much of a difference, because the, uh, the Venom shot needs four energies, and he could only get three in the next turn, and then... Yoshiyuki yes. might be able to close out the, ga uh, the game afterwards right away. However, he yeah, unfortunately, would... we haven't been able to see the Ninkadas at all this game. Like, <laughs> they haven't been able to, to shine because the Baby Lacephalon yeah. is just such a hard counter to it. Or like, at, at least a really nice check. Um, you can't really bench it into it because yeah, we've just yeah. get knocked out. So, yeah, just throwing <laughs> them away is fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm already happy that we saw a lot of his deck shine in this match. Like, the Lily's Poké Dolls were really strong. Um, the Dusk Man did quite a good job. Like yes. all, all the support engine worked really well. So like the the, Ninka, the Shedinja would have been the cherry on top. But yeah, unfortunately we didn't get to see that. And yeah, I I don't think. I'm not sure if Yoshiyuki still had a custom catcher left in his deck. I don't think so. I don't think there's one. I, maybe the last one is prized. Yeah, so he would have to draw it out of his prize because I also don't think he discarded it yet. 
But yeah, I didn't see it yeah. in his deck, and so if the opponent just puts up a Mewtwo next turn, something big, it could be hard for Yoshiyuki to find the what he needs to win the game in the next turn. Yeah. So you see the the Brave Blade attack going for the yeah. knockout, maybe hoping to draw the, the custom catcher of the prizes. That would be really nice. Ooh, and, and there where's the is. custom catcher? So yeah, this is... With a Metal Core Barrier, I don't think that the opponent has anything that can take the knockout on the Zation. And yes. then he can just Custom Catcher and retreat into Dusk Main and take his last prizes next turn. Oh, also, the <laughs> Dusk Main's attack does 100. And if the opponent um, has only one prize left, it does 100 extra. And big thank you to Make Love Not War Turtle for cheering 10,000 bits. Yeah, t that's 10,000, I believe. That's so huge. That Thank is you very much. a lot. Thank you very much. Make love, no war turtle. Pretty sure that's Benji. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I hope you enjoy the game as much as we do. It seems to be pretty interesting. And yeah, so the Duskman will be able to do 200 damage next turn. Which is, yes. yeah, which is basically enough to take out a knockout on anything. And yeah, here we see the play he's going for the Mewtwo probably hoping that Yoshiyuki has like six trainer cards in his hand and going with, in with a poltergeist and so this gives him an option to win this turn and if there's not if there's less than six trainer cards then he can hope that Yoshiyuki doesn't have his custom catchers to win the game next turn Yes, yeah, exactly yeah. as you said. Yeah. <laughs> and then so, he would only need a switch, accelerate two more energies, and then he could snipe off something with Venom Shot. But yeah, we already know that Yushiyuki got his last custom catcher at his deck. Yeah, and there's no hand disruption from the Malama player, as it looks like. Yep. Yeah, just the poltergeist. And and yeah. <laughs> so we will see the 200 damage from Duskman Necrozma for game. Yoshiyuki will move up to 2-0 and yeah, I'm actually really happy about this result. Like, the opponent did put up a really good game, I think. Like, yeah. it's been one of the best games I've ever seen from a Malama Mewtwo because a lot of those t a lot of times they just break. <laughs> so... Yeah, it seems kind of inc inconsistent at times, that's true, but... Exactly, but... Uh, Jirachi is, uh, in my opinion, also a little bit better than than the Dene a lot of times because the Dene yeah. is just after you drop it it's just useless and you need the bench space as a Malama player to remain flexible in my opinion um, yeah the, the Jirachi is just such an amazing card and his deck worked like a charm he put in a lot of early aggression but you, you keep just managed to find exactly the right answers in yeah what was a pretty exciting game so I'm very happy with this round too I hope everyone enjoyed it and thank you again for uh, Make Love No War Turtle for this big cheer of 10,000 bits. And yeah, we will go to a quick break and we'll be back with round 3 as soon as possible. As you see, those, the players were about 3 minutes of time left, so they are reporting their games currently. We'll hopefully manage to do that in time, should be fine, and yeah, we will be back soon.